Hi all, now that I'm some sort of big shot YouTuber, I thought I'd add some production value into my videos. For instance, I thought I'd add a little side character. Why don't you introduce yourself? I guess I couldn't afford voice acting. I'm bored. I need another kid show to relentlessly rip into to feel better about myself. Oh look, that thing has something for me. Andy's prehistoric adventures. I got a bad feeling about this one. All right, do I just, uh, do I start this thing? Do I just feed it in there? Oh, hey, here we go. I'm Andy. You know, I don't know about this. I don't, I don't think I can get into Andy's prehistoric adventures. Caveman? Now caveman I can get into. So it's a series about a guy who risks collapsing the space-time continuum to go on little vacations to prehistoric times. I knew I couldn't trust this guy. Jesus Christ. So each episode begins in the National Museum where Andy and his assistant Jen are usually setting up a display which tends to be the subject of the story. This week it's about the Australopithecus, an early genus of hominins which are typically found at your local McDonald's at 2am. Andy is bringing over the final piece that will complete the display. A three million year old, one of a kind, priceless artifact that he handles quite roughly without any gloves at all. <laughs> I will bet you $10 that that guy swings that thing around like a wand when no one is around. He then puts the priceless artifact on display so it can be touched by the grimy, disgusting, peasanty general public. Put it in place. Andy and Jen then become distracted when their boss comes along and strikes up a chat, allowing the museum's janitor to come by and rub the caveman's hard, girthy stick. Don't worry, it's in safe hands. We'll take good care of it. I knew I could- I, What? Did he just- I, he didn't even go searching for it. It's probably like only like three meters away. Andy and Jen realize the real stick is missing. Andy kicks off the excitement by saying his favorite catchphrase. Time to go on a prehistoric adventure. I'm sorry, are you talking to me, Andy? You wanna go on an adventure with me? Well, I don't know if I wanna go on an adventure with you. Uh, uh, the stick's right there. If you just look down on the ground right there, right there. oh, screw it. Let's just go back in time and steal some caveman stick to the time of Australopithecus. Or how about to uh, five minutes ago when you actually had the artifact? I'm sure that would be a, a lot easier than you know going back in time and robbing some ancient ape. <laughs> okay, I think Andy's enjoying going back in time a little bit too much. Andy successfully time travels, but finds himself appearing on a freestanding rock. How will he create a bridge to get across, you wonder? Yes! Andy, what are you doing? That's your time machine. It's your only way of getting back. They could have just fallen off the cliff or disintegrated. Oh, oh Andy, you goddamn moron. I'm gonna have to look for it later. <laughs> yeah, no, that clock is floating down that river in a million pieces. Well, it looks like Andy's stuck in the past. He'll have to find himself a nice little ape woman to shack up with. Sure, she may be a little bit hairy and can only communicate through vocalized grunts. But what she'll lack in uh, contemporary beauty standards, uh, she'll well and truly make up for in aggressive prehistoric spirit. This is probably a good place to look. Oh boy, we're finally gonna get to see some cavemen. <laughs> oh, oh God, I take it back. Take it back, I don't wanna see no cavemen no more. <coughs> I'm uncomfortable. Andy quickly finds the caveman eat caveman world and he and his newly found cave gang are chased out by some ruffians. <laughs> oh God. Is, um, am I having a fever dream? Is that real? Is this real? Am I real? <laughs> Yo, look at that little caveman kid. He's got like the thousand yard stare going on. After narrowly escaping, the cave gang find themselves in another pickle. I need to warn the gang. Look out! Yeah, I'm sure they understand the words look out. Oh my God, get out of there. Oh God, the small one. Watch out, little one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, he got trampled. Like absolutely pulverized. I mean, you could make a jam out of him. Now I just want to call out the tremendous effort the animation team put into animating that cave woman boobage. 
I think it really helps bring to life a scene about a group of terrified screaming apes fleeing and seeing their child pulverized by a rampaging prehistoric elephant. Oh, no. oh wait, there he is, the little guy, he's still alive. Look at him, he's uh, having a wake, taking a dump. I don't know, but Andy's watching him through a pair of binoculars, which is making this way more weirder than it should be. Andy then catches the attention of the cave elephant and escapes by... I don't understand what just happened. Like, Andy just somersaulted like he was in Dark Souls and went out of the elephant's aggro range. Is that what happened? Phew, he's gone. Oh. Are you okay, little guy? <laughs> this little cave kid cannot catch a break. I mean, this world is hell bent on squishing him. You know, that is the exact expression I have on my face when I'm at a social event and I'm standing in a corner because I don't know anyone. Oh. <laughs> oh god, he just like plummeted to his death. I I can't handle this. It's no wonder they went extinct. I mean, there's one almost being killed off every five minutes. When the danger is gone, the cave gang decide to forage for food using caveman sticks. Oh, my little friend is on his own again. The family saw weakness in him when he didn't make it to the tree and now it's time for him to starve to death, you know? No baggage for the winter. Oh, there we go. This should do it. Dig until you find tasty root. Munch on that. Ugh, oh God, there's just something so unnerving about these CGI cave people. Well, this is what I've been looking for. Great, I'll put it in my backpack. Wait, don't take his stick. How is he gonna eat now? Well, that settles it. Whatever little hope that little cave kid had left uh, is now gone. He's as good as dead. Thanks, Andy. Moving on, Andy somehow hears the time traveling clock chiming 50 kilometers away. He gets on a self-inflating dinghy, which is propelled by the life force Andy stole from the little cave child. I'm sorry, but how the hell did that clock survive that huge drop, going down rapids, falling down a rocky waterfall and surviving? Like, you know, time travel I can believe in, but an invincible clock? You have crossed the line, Andy. Tasty root. So now Andy has to get the stick back on display before his boss arrives. Now what would have been more impressive is if he dragged back that little ostracized cave kid and had him stuffed. Tasty. Look, I'm gonna be honest here. I, I can't get enough of these CGI cave people. It, it's addictive. I, I wanna collect their essence, distill it and inject it right into my veins. I think we're gonna have to do another episode. This next episode has us once again in front of the Australopithecus display. I did notice there's a little bit of hair missing on the side. Boy, if I had a quarter for every time that's happened to me. And he sticks the hair back on, but the world's worst janitor is up to his old tricks. His hair's gone missing again. Maybe we could replace it with some other hair. Get the hair from somewhere else. I don't like where this is going. There's just not enough time. Time, that's it. Oh, he said it, we're going back in time. Hat, backpack, gizmo. Waxing strips. Once again, Andy is sent back in time, but finds an old enemy waiting for him. Oh, come on, that's the same shot they used in the previous episode. This is also the perfect place to spot. Oh, there it is, get him, wax that little caveman. That one looks like the leader. <laughs> that dude's walking around like he's being told by his physio he needs to improve his posture. I'll just go and ask them if they've got any hair for my display. Ah uh, yes, when I need hair, I just walk up to a group of people having a picnic and go, excuse me, uh, can I have some hair? Just a tuft will do, I brought my own clippers. I'm Andy, and I was wondering if- <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> now, I gotta say, that cave woman telling Andy off looks eerily similar to my cat throwing up a hairball. Or where's that little loner cave kid from the first episode, you know? He looked very easy to scalp. So Andy stalks the family on a quest for hair and spots a dangerous predator nearby. The monkeys flee in a manner similar to someone running to a bathroom 30 minutes after eating sushi from a truck stop. Andy's accepted into the group because he helped scare away the cat. He immediately just starts grooming the leader. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. He manages to get the hair then suddenly hears the chime of the clock. Unfortunately, Andy's backpack is stolen by a real estate agent. 
Sorry, I mean vulture. The vulture then takes it to a bird orgy. Oh no, how is Andy going to get his backpack? Turn him off! <laughs> oh god, I never would have guessed that. Andy searches for things in his bag that might help him get back to the clock quicker. He finds dog biscuits and a suspiciously strong rope. Who can blame the guy? You try taking hair from a caveman without restraints. But how on earth will these things help him? What? What? Time to head back! Well, I... <laughs> And he makes it back in time and sticks on the missing hair and ends up with caveman ball hair stuck to his chin. Mm, best kids show I've ever seen. 10 out of 10. Would recommend for all your children's. So that was Andy's prehistoric adventures. And believe it or not, that's not the only adventure show this guy has. There's Andy's dinosaur adventures. And that's not even the same as Andy's prehistoric adventures. Think of that. He has two different types of adventure shows set in prehistoric times. There's also... Andy's Aquatic Adventures, Andy's Wild Adventures, Andy's Global Adventures, Andy's Safari Adventures. For the most part, they all follow the same structure, you know, there's some event or some display and Andy or someone else loses or destroys an artifact and then he has to go back in time or to a certain location to retrieve another one. And you know, while watching these adventure shows, I got a sense of deja vu, like I'd seen some of this footage before. And that's when I realized all the clips that Andy green screens himself into are just clips from other BBC documentaries and archived footage. For instance, Andy's prehistoric adventures uses clips from walking with beasts and walking with dinosaurs. I mean, what kind of lazy hack just green screens himself into other footage for entertainment value? And that's not all the series this guy has. I mean, he has the whole kid show market sewn up. He has Andy's dino toy box, which is a, a show in which he plays with dinosaur toys. Andy's baby animals. Andy's wild workouts. Oh God. And Andy's secret hideout. What happens in Andy's secret hideout? Stays in Andy's secret hideout. That's just way too much content for me to go into. And you know, I've just had about enough of Andy's adventures. I heard the next one's gonna be Andy's wartime adventures. He's going to be green screened into Vietnam War footage. <laughs> Anyways, uh, look, I don't think this is going to work out. So if you could just, I don't know, get out of here. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Bye. See ya. I need a co-host that's amazing. That says production values, you know? If only I had more time. Time? <laughs> that's it. Time of the Australopilicton. <laughs> wow, it worked. Hey, there's that little cave kid from earlier. Hey little kid, you want to be in my YouTube? What are you doing? Oh, that is disgusting. Oh, this won't do. This won't do at all. I gotta go find his family. Hey, there's his family. Hey, all of you. Would any of you like to be in my YouTube video? Um, you can have some of my nuts. Not my nuts, but some edible nuts, you know. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not a Hollywood executive. Um, right. right. I should probably be getting back to my timeline. Um, I, I think I hear the clock chiming. Sorry, did you guys say, no?